If you're looking to get into content creation for YouTube, there has never been a better time to do it, as the barrier for entry is the lowest it's ever been, specifically for PC gamers. The barrier for entry is pretty much free, maybe costing as much as a PC microphone to start, but even then you could probably just use a voice recorder on your phone and just transfer that recording to your PC for use in video editing. Making content for console games might actually be a little more expensive than PC gaming content at the moment requiring the purchase of a capture card to record footage, and while some entry-level cards can be a bit on the cheaper side, with things like OBS, Nvidia Shadowplay, and AMD Relive, capturing footage on your desktop, or any PC game you want is now completely free. Shadowplay and Relive come with your GPU software, and you can use things like the free version of DaVinci Resolve for video editing. And OBS is also free and useful in screen recording, recording capture cards from consoles or other PCs, and of course, for streaming. If I was going to start a YouTube channel today, with all the free software available, I would probably start a PC gaming focused channel. If you already have a PC and a Steam account, you're already 90% there. Just find a way to record your voice if you plan on doing voiceover that is, and you're good. With all the tools at your disposal today, it's practically free. However, things were not always so. When I first started on YouTube, buying a $90 Dazzle capture card that came with Pinnacle Studio 10, and some Y-Splitter wires and covering console games was a lot easier to do than covering PC games. The internet was inundated at the time with all kinds of PC screen recording software that you had to pay for. They would let you download a free version of that software that would let you record maybe 30 seconds to 1 minute snippets of footage, but with a watermark on top. The only PC recording software I was aware of in 2007 whenever I started on YouTube that was free was the screen recording software that came with Xfire. Who remembers Xfire by the way? I miss Xfire, I used to use it all the time to lose horribly in Quake 3 online servers. Years ago, I bought Fraps. Fraps was always a useful benchmarking tool back in the day. Not only was it a screen recorder, but downloading the free version still allowed users to display an FPS counter in their games. For me personally, in the days of Windows XP, Fraps was the only usable benchmarking software available to me. At least the only one I was aware of. I know that NSI, Afterburner, and RevaTuner were around, but I don't remember them having an FPS counter like their modern counterparts do, and if they did, I never used them. Most PC gamers of the day used Fraps to see how well their rig could run games. From my experience, which may not have been everyone else's experience at the time, Fraps was an essential program to use to test your rig against the newest, most demanding games. However, the benchmarking aspect aside, spending $30 on Fraps opened up the possibility to record footage that was longer than one minute, and remove the Fraps watermark on top of your video. You could do full size 60 frame per second recordings with Fraps. There were just a couple of huge problems with doing this. First and foremost, recording with Fraps would obliterate your frame rate in the game. If you've heard of how hard Crisis was to run back in the day, Crisis was a system killer, but recording with Fraps was a nuclear bomb on your PC. Even the best Windows XP rigs of the days were obliterated by recording with Fraps. Realistically, full size 60 frame per second videos were not going to be a thing on any Windows XP rig, except for maybe a very few supercomputer rigs. However, you could do half size 30 frame per second videos which would cut your frame rate in half if you were lucky. If you're one of those newer PC gamers who complain about Shadowplay or Relive taking 5 or so frames per second from your frame rates while recording, bruh, you don't know the struggle. Another big issue with Fraps is that it uses its own proprietary video codec, which means that very few media players can play the footage you record. For modern PCs, I found that VLC Player is the only one that can play Fraps videos. Windows Movie Maker was the only video editing software available to me at the time to edit Fraps videos directly. That's where Handbrake comes in to convert Fraps videos to a usable format and to resync the sound in some videos. Oftentimes, the sound in both Fraps videos and the free 
Free X Fire recording software would become unsynced from the footage. Handbrake not only compresses the giant uncompressed video files Fraps produces, but also resyncs the gameplay footage to the sound. Handbrake is also free and open source and is a great way to compress large video files while maintaining good quality. Handbrake is another invaluable free tool for video editing. The final and biggest issue, well I kind of already mentioned it, is that Fraps would record completely uncompressed video files. This means that the quality of the footage is still amazing to this day, but I kid you not that recording 3 minutes and 33 seconds of Serious Sam the Second Encounter footage was 19 gigabytes in size. 19 gigabytes. Handbrake compressed it down to 500 megabytes. However, Fraps not only killed your gameplay frame rate, it not only uses a proprietary codec, but to record full size 60 frame per second footage would eat your entire hard drive in a matter of minutes, if it was even minutes. Bring that into the world of 4K footage and even my brand new PC that I just finished building myself last week can still get its frame rate tanked by this ancient recording software. My new system running a Ryzen 7 7700 non-X version, which I chose for its lower TDP, and the fact that there's only about 4-5% to performance difference between the X and non-X, with an RX 7900 GRE and 32 gigs of DDR5 running at 6000 megatransfers per second, with both a DVD drive and a Blu-ray drive, still struggles with fraps at times. I know, who still uses an optical drive in 2024? Well, I still own a lot of old physical games and a lot of them still run perfectly fine on Windows 10, which I'm also using. For example, I've put good old Chunky Quake, Wind Quake, on every PC I've ever owned. It's always one of the first games I install whenever I get a new computer and it just runs. Doom 3 just runs. The original Unreal still runs fine, as does Deus Ex. I do not like you will own nothing and be happy, with games like Unreal Tournament being taken down off of Steam, which I can still download because I bought it before it was pulled. I prefer to just buy used copies of old PC games, making sure they have their manuals complete for those games that require the CD keys. In fact, I'm about to shut up and show you a comparison between Fraps recording and Radeon Relive recording as a quality comparison just for Fun. But every game I'm about to compare here was installed on my PC via a physical disc, except for the Steam version of Doom, which I'm showing. I was also planning on running the Fraps recordings through Handbrake for this comparison. However, Handbrake brightens the footage, and it doesn't really represent the quality of Fraps as good as I wanted it to. The Fraps recordings were darker in nature, however, sometimes that looks better in older games, bringing out some of those old lighting effects you would otherwise have never noticed. What I did was I played the Fraps footage in VLC player and used Relive to record my screen, and while it still isn't a 100% representative of the quality of Fraps, which is still amazing actually because it's uncompressed footage, that's why it looks great, it does get closer to representing the quality of Fraps than Handbrake does. I will also be muting the sound on some of the Fraps recordings as there is a lot of annoying sound popping in some of the footage. As Fraps gets older, its compatibility issues with newer hardware will increase, making for glitches like the sound popping I mentioned showing up in the footage whereas I never had those issues on older hardware. In the end, thankfully, Fraps has been surpassed by free modern game recording software. Like I said, now is the best time to get into YouTube content creation because you have so many free tools at your disposal. However, Fraps is still a useful tool for those who like to build retro PCs. If you're building, say, a Windows XP computer and want to know the frame rates of the games on the hardware you're using, Fraps is a great tool for that. You can even try to record with it, but thankfully nowadays there are even easier ways to record retro rigs through capture cards, including VGA to HDMI adapters. Fraps was great for its time, still has excellent quality, but it eats hard drives and frame rates for breakfast. A legendary program if you ask me, but I am glad there are now newer, free options for people to use. All that being said, here is my comparison between Fraps recording quality and Radeon Relive.
toxicity of material routinely handled in the Black Mesa compound. No smoking, eating, or drinking are permitted within the Black Mesa transit system. Please keep your limbs inside the train at all times. Do not attempt to open the doors until the train has come to a complete halt at the station platform. In the event of an emergency, passengers are to remain seated and await further instruction. If it is necessary to exit the train, disabled personnel should be evacuated first. Please stay away from electrified rails and proceed to an emergency station until assistance arrives. 